back to another episode of the Girl Stop Playing podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. Y'all already know that I believe you can make the money and you can get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And it's my goal to bring you the information and the conversations that help you do just that. This week's episode is brought to you by... It's really brought to you by me because y'all need to buy my new book, y'all. It's called Nobody is Coming to Save You. I'm going to link it below, but it is full of inspirational short stories from black women just like you who pulled themselves up, discovered their purpose, and figured out how they could save themselves without having to wait for somebody to come along and save them. Speaking of this new book, I have one of my co-authors in the studio today, Miss Casey Cooper. She is a trucking federal contractor the ceo of the compass circle and homegirl is out here getting to these coins so we got to get into it welcome casey hi go thanks for having me i am so excited we were able to get into this this of course for people who you know follow me on instagram have have been keeping connected with me y'all know casey we've done things together in the past and anytime i have an opportunity to bring you on my platform it's my pleasure to do so because well because you are amazing but also because the industry that you're in the access to the information that you have i feel like black people have been late to the party on this conversation so get your notebooks out um because this is going to be a good one so i mentioned that you are in the trucking space you're a federal contractor How did you get into trucking? Because when we hear trucking, like my brother's a trucker, my nephew's a trucker, it's always a man that I think of. So how did you get into the space? So I got into trucking because when I was 15, I used to have vending machines, right? And so I would go to Costco and get my merchandise and fill it up. And so early on, I learned that I don't have to be the one making the money. So I got about 25 and I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna just buy a truck. It just was like Mm -hmm. an epiphany. And I did buy a truck, and I put a driver in it, but I ended up having to drive. So it didn't go quite as planned. It worked out Never later. Does. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, that's kind of where, the, where the, the thought came from. So you bought a truck. You put somebody in it. Things happen like they always do. It didn't necessarily work out. And instead of you saying, okay, let me just hire another driver, you said, I'm going to figure I said, out I'm how gonna I'm going to do this. Right. Yes. So did you end up like driving in the sense of just going to get your truck or you got on the road and like started no. taking loads? When I was purchasing the truck, I was at DMV getting my permit because I knew you. somebody has to learn how to like move this thing. Mm-hmm. And then I drove for four years on and off. Shut up. I did. Did you? Yeah. What was that like? I didn't um, know this. It was pretty like cool at first. Until I start breaking down a hundred miles from home Mm. and being dirty every day. Yeah. Um, But I got over it real quick. Like, I didn't want to do it no more. I'm seeing so many women getting into the space and doing, what's, is it called tandem driving? Like two two people in the truck together? uh, Teams, running teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, How is the, how is the money being a driver versus being an owner? Mm. So here's the thing. As a driver, you're only going to make so much because it's not your company. That's anywhere, right? As an owner, I mean, it's unlimited, but you have more risk, you have more issues, you have more problems. It's like kids. You got, you know, you, each kid makes you more money, but it's also more issues. Gotcha. So it's kind of like a toss-up. You really got to decide what you want to deal with and kind of work backwards. How do you show up as a woman, as an attractive woman, as a black woman in these spaces, having these conversations when it is typically like a white male dominated yeah. space? I'm so used to it now. I just bust in the room like, hey, you I'm know, here. I just bring my full self. At first, when like earlier on, I was kind of intimidated because I am a beautiful woman. You know what I mean? And it is mostly white. But you just got to go in there and just be you and the right people will gravitate towards you. So when did you get into because trucking? OK, we've heard about it. Federal contracting with trucking, I feel like we don't know enough about it. Right. When did you transition or how was the transition from I'm working with the dispatcher. I'm getting these loads, which is like the traditional way of doing things to I have more guaranteed income and loads with contracts. It was actually I was kind of against it, to be honest, because I had the trucks. I had the drive. I had five trucks, five trailers, five drivers. That's a lot of financial bandwidth. That's Mm -hmm. a lot of responsibility. So I was so plugged in and so just in my zone every day. 
when I heard about contracts, I didn't really at first take it as serious as I probably should have. But once I did, I mean, it took me two months to get my first contract. And once that Shut happened, up. yeah, I was like, to hell with them trucks. I'm not. You was off to the races. I was off to the races. I, I know in your chapter um, in the book, it said um, like your moment of knowing you had to save yourself was when you realized you were thinking too small. Yeah. Was that is that what you were referencing? Like that there was another way of doing things other than what you had become used to? Not even thinking too small. I think we go into business upside down. White people go get the contract first, which tells them who, what, when, where, how, and how much. We go run to go dig the ditch, right? And then... Be throwing our money in there. You just can't expand doing the work all the time. So I had to just kind of pivot, take a step back, get rid of every asset-based truck I had, because now I hire people to do the work for me. Mm-hmm. And it just, it really, like, changed my whole entire, like, life. It grew from there. Oh, my God. <sighs> okay, so I cannot still wrap my mind around two months to get in the contract two months did you did you have to go through the certification process or was that not a requirement of the contract because in my mind and i think a lot of people what holds us back is we're coming up with all of these obstacles that probably don't even exist right. so one of the obstacles that i from the outside looking in not knowing anything about it it's like well i have to be minority certified i have no. to have my no. all of those things you no. did not need that before you got no. your first contract to be registered in sam's you don't have to be in business for any amount of time you just have to have an ein number a duns number a business bank account and that's it so I got my first contract with just those things. Then later, I got a, like almost $6 million contract, but that was through another certification. So the certifications do make you more attractive, but, but you don't have to have any. First. Yeah, just to get in the game, no, you don't need any. Okay. And SAMS is the System website that you, management. that you register with. SAM.gov. And it's free. <sighs> Six milli. Well, it's a little more than that now. Come on, it's a little more, than, a little that. more that than, than that now. One. That was the first one. The first one. That was the third million. one, actually. Okay, so yeah. what would you say, aside from what I just said, like the challenges, the obstacles to to getting started? What would you say is like the biggest misconception with being able to become a federal contractor? Like, what's holding people back that you can just like dispel for them? I think most people think that they need all this equipment, they need all this, you know, manpower. They this is about facilitating the work the government needs. It's not about doing it yourself. Mm-hmm. So you can't do a $10 million project by yourself. You just can't do it. Right. You're going to have to bring in more partners. And so really in everyday life, that's how I work. I don't do a whole lot anymore. I hire out everything. I'm not doing nothing but overseeing. And that suits me much better. Yes. Yeah. And it's less risk because less having risk. all this equipment in your name. Right. Less on headache. the road. Yeah. It's yeah, it, it definitely is a lot. Um, when you got that first contract, though, and I know it's been years, but can you think back to what was the biggest challenge? Like something you wish you would have known before you got it that we can help people who want to get one prepared with? On the first one? The first one. Nothing. It was great. I got Easy no, peasy. I never had to visit the facility. I got a great markup. like, And then I got another one like 30 days later. And they just gave it to me. These are not contracts I had to bid for with no certifications. There was a need. I was in the game, and they called me and gave it to me. Okay, so without certifications, without you bidding, there had to have been, in my mind, again, I might just be putting a limiting belief out there, but was it just someone you, someone knew of you and no, they were like you? No, the government don't work like that. They so have, it wasn't like you were a subcontractor and there was a prime no, that just hit you? No, I was the prime. So I'm a native of Virginia, so all my stuff started from there uh-huh. there was a contract in northern virginia very close to dc for snow removal it wasn't even for trucking but i had so much past performance i had been in business for 10 years at that point um they just picked up the phone and called me and was like hey can you do this and i was like shut yeah. up and you said give me that money i did and they gave it to me so now are some of your contracts where you are the prime and then you're going out looking for subs all of them i don't let out. i don't sub to anybody because people won't pay you that's the thing Mm. that's the thing you say you don't you're not the sub on anybody's contract you only are the prime and then you hire out i don't do business that way like you're not gonna pay me i'm a i'm gonna pay you the one yeah Yeah. wow okay so do you you don't have to have a certification nope do you have to have you have to have your equipment first though nope you don't even have to have equipment (laughs) it's real different yeah how? Because Casey, it's, how? It's, these are federal reservations. It's federal property. So the same rules don't apply in the regular local world. It doesn't work like that. It's so much money in the budget. It's more money in the budget than companies and people on the planet to do to it. To do the work. Right. So we end up getting thrown stuff. Like, 
look, you in the area, this is what we need. Please come do it. So you get the contract and then you go find people to to fulfill. Yes. And in some cases, depending on where the contract is, the incumbent or the previous person that had the contract, let's say it's Asheville, North Carolina, right? There's not that many, I'm just going to use snow removal, for example. There's not that many snow removal companies in that area. So your subs will tend to be the same, but the prime always changes. Mm. Feel me? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's the same guy waiting on me to call him in the area. It's just I'm getting the work. Why isn't he getting the work? Because he don't know no better. Cause he ain't insane. That's like the difference between why all the people are driving the trucks versus hello. Wow, next level information. Next level. And one thing that I've learned is that, and maybe it's not true. I hope that it is, that you can pass these contracts down. Mm, yes and no, kind of. Yes. Is this how technically other people yes. have been creating yes. generational wealth? So we talk about eight A certification. I'm in the eight A program. This is my. Tell us what that is. So eight A is a it's a vehicle. It's a contract tool for uh, women-owned minority companies who have disparities. We are disparaged. And so it allows... Y'all look disparaged, girl. Well, I ain't no more. <laughs> but <laughs> I once was. And so it allows you to bypass the bidding process so the government can give you contracts $7 million or less without having to bid. Got you. Okay, so go ahead. So you're in so, the 8A. I'm in 8A. The program lasts for nine years. So what that looks like in real time is, let's say, me or you or anybody else, we have a company, right? We get in the program. Your first four years are supposed to be, like, developmental because you're trying to figure it out, right? By years five to six to seven, each year they want to see the percentage of those contracts kind of go down because when you get to year nine, they don't want you dependent on that vehicle. However, most people don't do that. If somebody's mm -hmm. giving you all this money, you're going to keep taking it. Mm -hmm. So if you make $100 million in the life of the, the span of the, the nine certification, years. Yeah, they're going to kick you out. But at $100 million— Who cares? Kick me out. Right, kick me out. But what they will do is get a younger 8A company— to give the work that they left on the table, you know, the contracting officers that they know and kind of bring them along and, and get the money that way. So for someone who is in this space, maybe they are a driver or maybe they are an owner and they have drivers, what would be the route for them to transition into the way you're doing it right now? So they need to definitely go to SAMS, www.sam.gov. That's free. Register. Um, get your paperwork together, get as many certifications as you can. Your phone can just ring because you are in there. And people won't tell you that, which is another misconception that I think is kind of, it's just, it's very limiting, you know. But it can happen. It happens to me regularly, um, especially once you start completing them and you get a good name and people start, you know, finding out about your company. And just kind of, you know, look and see what's out there. It's it's like 100,000 contracts that come out every single day all over the world. So there's no shortage of work. And at the end of the fiscal year, which we're past September 30th, but there's still money. Left over. For leftover. And there's also money for first quarter for next year. So it's money everywhere. And I'm assuming every contract is different. So oh, yeah. you could have a contract for a year or more than a year. Yeah, typically they're one to five years. Typically they're like five years. Um, you have like option one and then you can renew for the four years. Um, but yeah, you're going to have longevity, great markups, less like energy. You're not out there digging the ditch no more. And less stress because you ain't out here posting on social media trying to get paid. Nope. You just post for fun. I hate it. Well, I post to educate. You do be doing some educating. Baby, listen, you nobody do. can hang with me you when do. it comes to. You, you be putting that content out listen. at the compass circle. At the compass uh, circle. Check her out. Okay, so I know we're talking about <clears throat> trucking specifically in the transportation space, but I have heard and seen some of the craziest requests out there, like for things that you can get contracts for. Oh, yeah, okay. So outside of transportation, what are some of like the craziest things that you've seen? Two pays. Um, I know you're going to say that because I, I asked somebody. I like, posted wigs. that. Yeah, wigs. You posted two pays? Yeah, it's way down my page. Uh, two, two pays. Oh, you mean you posted it on? I'm like, girl, why would you bid for two pays? But you no, posted no, no. it on your page. Okay. Um, so like wounded warriors, when they come back from war, you know, they try to help them. Um, makeup, soybeans. Now, why would you need makeup? Because the wigs I can get, it's like medical wigs and things oh, like I that. Oh, I don't know. You don't, it's, you it's just, just it's it. that convoluted. There are so many agencies, sub agencies. They do so many things. Like uh, I saw one for um, twelve uh, white polar bears for scientists in Alaska. We're not thinking, you know, Department of Interior. 
all these other intricate agencies we're just not you're not thinking about nasa you're not thinking about research you're not thinking about laboratories we're not thinking about anything we're thinking about instagram we're thinking about instagram wow so the reason i brought that up even though it doesn't have anything to do with trucking is again our people have so many limiting beliefs around the way we have to do business i mean i was at a conference i was at a, a lunch the other day um shout out to david shans he got together a bunch of podcasters and he was talking about how he got a contract with a, a corporate contract because they are creating a podcast division. See? And I'm over here like <laughs> See? thinking about advertisers and thinking about, you know, all of like the traditional ways yeah. that you get paid. But there's literally a whole world outside of just our limited scope of how to do business. And other communities have tapped into this. But we, again, are like late to the party when it comes to these conversations. Yeah, it's real different over here. Real different. Real different. And one of the things that I think we don't know or we're not educated on is the fact that the government has nothing. They don't right. make anything. They don't produce anything. Right. They're literally looking. That's where all of these contracts are coming from. They're not out here making wigs. You know, they're not right. out here doing makeup. They're literally contracting small business owners like you and me, even though I don't think you know small business owners. She's doing big business. Oh. But contracting these small business owners to be able to fulfill the need. Yeah. And for us, it's just like, no, if I do makeup, I got to do it on you. I got to, right. you know, find you to do it. But you can literally get a contract for it. Literally. It's real different. Yeah, they are the largest customer in the world. Paper clips to catch up to rocket scientists to animals to, I mean, anything. They buy it all. They buy it all. And we selling it. So we just got to start it. selling it in the right way. What do you think is something that you wish you would have known before you, even though your first contract was easy, knowing what you know now, having, you know, do, doing it for so long, what would be like some advice that you would give someone before they get their first contract? Um, get into project management. Like that's the wave. It's not about having. What does that mean? Explain that. So you can manage the project. You're facilitating the work. You're you're basically not the middleman, but you're like the boss, and you're just making sure that everything is. It gets done. Yeah, but you go hire what you need. Go hire the trucks. Go hire the staff, and then you mark it up. Make your money. Let them come in and do the work because they're already doing it. Mm -hmm. You're giving them work. They're happy to get paid. And you have less stress, you're making more money, and the job gets done, and everybody's happy. Y'all make it just sound so easy. Y'all make it sound so easy. And again, I've been like playing around with this paperwork, y'all. This, mm. this, uh, mm. I know, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But I've literally been playing around with like the certification paperwork for go fill out that at paperwork, least like girl. three years. Go fill out the paperwork. I need to stop. I, I need to stop playing. It's me. I'm the girl that needs to stop playing. Um, okay. So first steps to getting started, doing the, the SAMs. You, I'm assuming, would not recommend anybody, because trucking has become like this thing. Right. Trucking is like the thing to do, but most people are telling you how to buy a truck, what kind of truck you should buy, yada, yada, yada. Your recommendation. Don't go buy no truck. Don't. Don't y'all go listen. My recommendation. <laughs> What, what camera even, do I need to look into? My business, but my recommendation: don't go out here buying. Don't go out here buying no truck. Okay. Don't do. Don't like do me. that. Don't do like me. Yeah, look at that camera. Tell the people what to don't do. Don't go buy no truck. Don't do that. <sighs> what do they do? Go fill out the paperwork. Go fill out the paperwork, and then find the people with the truck. Find the people with the trucks. Okay, so speaking of finding the people with the trucks, I know, and I've I've been able to watch you even. Since I've known you, your business has evolved, right? Definitely. So now I see you talking a lot about the turnkey. Yes. Tell the people what that's all about. So we have a program. It's called Turnkey. And, and I wish I had done this if I had known better. Um, so if you're going to do trucking, I would say do it how we design it. We set up the trucking company for you. We do everything. We make sure you're all FMCSA compliant, drug and alcohol, everything you need. And then we hire the fleet for you. So that you can focus on being a better business owner. They have the truck. They have the note. They're, you know, they want to get paid. And you make a percentage of every load that they carry. So you're like an investor. No, you're like Uber. But just for trucks. But you're just, your responsibility is putting the money up, right? Or no? What no, is your, your responsibility, responsibility is doing the payroll, of course, because we have in-house dispatchers that keep the trucks moving. So when you get paid, you have to make sure that you, you know, do the weekly deductions, pay your driver, and that's your involvement. So it's passive. <laughs> My head is spinning. I'm sorry. I'm Why? trying to. It's so it's, easy. It's just enlightening. I didn't well, know I try this to simplify everything. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know it was a thing. We wow. think too hard. We do, and then yeah. we don't be making no 
money. And the fact that you have children, two, two, two children, while you are managing all of this, I'm assuming, because I always, when, when people have kids, I'll be like, how are you doing anything? Like, how is it possible? But you figured out a smarter way to do it. So you aren't in it every single day. No. But I know that they know what's going on. Like, oh, they've definitely. been, they've obviously grown up in the yeah. business and, you know, been a part of the evolution. What is like the thing that you want them to take away from what they've seen you do? Um, so my children are being reared in a dynasty. Like you don't have a choice. You, my son is 14, 15. He just turned 15. He works for me already. My daughter will do the same. He will run my company and that's, that's your option. That's it. (laughs) Yeah. You're not going to work at Wendy's. How do you feel about college? Oh, it's, I mean, it's great, but my kid's not going. They're not. So they can't go. Can they go? If, if, they, if they wanted they to go. go but but they, I mean, it's not a nece- it's not a necessity, obviously, no. but you'll let them go. If my they kids are go. homeschooled, so they're not. Are they? Yeah, girl, I got to simplify my life, honey. But you're not teaching the lessons. No. Girl, let's talk about that. Okay, <laughs> we didn't even know this, but I, again, I just be asking my own personal questions because <laughs> Ask away. this is a conversation. Listen, I kid you not, today, just this morning, I went into my son's in Montessori. Okay. That tuition is college tuition. Kid you not. I already know. I have another baby on the way. Yes, you do. Yes, I do. (laughs) I went in there today and was like, hey, can you give me the price list for the infants? 30,000. Baby. I know. I came back outside. I said, baby. (laughs) We got to get another retreat. (laughs) Yeah, we cannot. No. No, it's not happening. He's like, I'm telling you, we're in the wrong business. We need to start a school. (laughs) And he keeps saying that. And I don't think he's joking. I think he's serious. So how my question is, I say all that to say. How do you do homeschool without you being responsible for doing the homeschool? Because I outsource everything. I have a living nanny. We have professors that my kids meet with weekly, um, especially for like history. I just I'm not into the traditional. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so they have mm-hmm. um, yeah me either. But yeah. I don't know about being responsible for the. Well, I'll give you the professor's the number. Um, you know, my kids learn about like Kemet and you know Real metaphysics history. and all that. Um, they also have a math tutor, and then they have an online curriculum that they follow, and we. I try to simplify everything. Yes. Yeah. Have Have you heard of like, I don't know the technical term for this, but it's like pods. Yeah. Like Like co-eds. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're they're still learning with other people. Because I think a big part of it is like the social aspect also of you not wanting your kids to just I think that's a misconception. Do you? Yeah, I do. do How do you feel about it? I don't. Because I mean, my kids are social. They went to school prior. We started off homeschooling and then I was in the thick of it. So they went to private school. And then things picked up, and I could not keep this up and that. So mm-hmm. some had to give. Right. And it's really the best decision I ever made. School yeah. is a lot, especially when your kids go to, like, a good school. You in school, really. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, two of them is a lot. Um, I'm not married or nothing, so, like, it's, it just was a lot. So when they, the first time doing homeschooling, were you doing it then, or you still had, like, a teacher I that was you doing hired? it solely then. But, mind you, this was, like, I was 27, so it was a little different. Life was different then. It was a little different, yeah. Wow. But I loved it. What? How old were they at that time? I only had my son. He was, he was like, a. Uh, Two, three, four. And then they went to school when he got like uh, nine. So my, in my mind, I used to be a teacher. I taught second and third I remember, grade. You do second grade. Right? Yeah, I taught second and third grade. And it's still a hell no for me. Only because <laughs> I feel like, and, and I mean, he's like off to the races with Montessori. Like he, he's only one, but he knows so he's getting much. It, yeah. And I have always known this since coming out of the classroom because I saw the difference between the kids who went to private school for like pre-K, kindergarten, first grade versus the kids who just been in public right. the whole time light years ahead Definitely. of the public school kids. So I always said, I didn't necessarily believe in private school as an expense, but I always thought that doing it early was a good investment Definitely. because once you get that early stuff, yeah, that's the foundation yeah. you're in there. So in my mind, my, you know, hang up is like, I don't want to be responsible for you knowing how to read. You know, like that is such a responsibility. If you mess that up, Ooh, I don't want that on me. No. So I don't mind doing some of it. I just don't want to do all of well, it. Well, I ain't doing none of it. Okay? You ain't doing none no, of it. I'm but not. your kids are older now. So here's my thing. I think what, what we're saying is similar. We all have a hang-up, right? My hang-up was, so my mom dogged me. Like I'm like, I got to take them out of school. And I felt so guilty because my career was really like taking off. And I went to the school and talked to the principal. I was like, I just can't do this no more. Yeah. Like, I can't do it. I can, some gotta get, I got to get this money. Yeah. But once I did, and my mom was like, you so stupid. Da, 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 da. I mean, she dragged me, right? And then a couple years later, COVID happened. And, and everybody she, was homeschooling. And anyway. she was like, you so smart. Oh, my God. <laughs> da, 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 da. And I was like, 
girl bye. Told you. Right. So I just got to get, you got to get out of your own head. You got to do what works for you. Mm -hmm. You're running your own race. I run my own race. So I have to do what works best for me. And it's working out. And it's working. And that'd be the thing. They'd be having all that to say until it started working. And they'd be like, you know what? Yeah, put me on. What I got to do? Speaking of your mama. Speaking of my mama. Your mama is a mess. She your is. mama doing these splits. Busting Follow it. her on Instagram <laughs> at the compass circle. Okay, it's more than just trucking going on on this. It's Instagram, way more okay? than just trucking. It's going way on. more than trucking. But I think that we are blessed to be a part of this yes. new generation that we don't have to do it their way. You know, like we figured out our own way of doing it. Even if people look at us crazy by our decisions, most of the time when we truly are doing what we're led to do, it's going to work out. It's and gonna then they're going to be asking, well, how did, how did you do that? Right. And I can't take advice from nobody that I wouldn't switch places from. And Facts. it ain't too many pla people that, that I would you're willing to. Hell no. So, yes. you, you know, people asking me what to do. So yeah. it's working and I'm happy to be doing it. Yes. And, and I'm happy that you are a part of yes. this book because... I mean, obviously, y'all are getting a glimpse at her story. Um, and there's so many women out there who might look at you now right. and think, well, but she had this or she had that. <sighs> Something that they don't have right. as an excuse or a right. limiting belief for why they can't have it or why they have to wait on someone to come along and save them, which is the whole premise of the book. So many diverse stories. OK, I'm talking about women who have dealt with homelessness, women who have dealt with domestic violence and women who don't have that sad story they were living their best life and yeah. it still wasn't the best life right. um so really i think that y'all will be able to relate with somebody out of the book but if you could summarize um like in one statement of why women need to save themselves what what would that be because you can't depend on nobody especially when you got babies like i can't look at my kid and say i can't figure it out I can't do it today. I don't have it. It's not an option. It's not an so option. So you got to figure it out. You got to figure it out. And these babies will bring some stuff up out of you. Like some stuff that you ain't know that you was. had. Yeah. <sighs> if it wasn't for my kids, I don't know what I'd be doing. That was like the... I see it now. Yeah. Like so many women who have like really figured it out, they had a baby to motivate them. That's you right. know, like they... The thing that could be looked at as a burden yeah. literally is your blessing because it's going to push you to it got to work or it got to work i mean imagine me not feeding them because somebody not feeding me that's crazy that's crazy that is crazy no i can't work like that <sighs> listen grab a copy of the book we just got into a little bit of it um for the trucking at the compass circle definitely check my girl out but what else what do they need to know? Because I know they heard you say about this turnkey and they like, how do I turn the key? Where do I sign up? So look in this camera right here and let the people know how they can find you online. So we are so easy to find. We are at The Compass Circle on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok. And you, you can on TikTok too, girl? I'm on TikTok real dancing? heavy, girl. You be dancing? No. No. Okay. I'll be educating. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> and our website is www.thecompasscircle.com. Check my girl out. She is legit, y'all, in this space. And I love that you are bringing other black people along with you. Absolutely. Bringing us to the party. Absolutely. Y'all, get your copy of the book. I will make sure I link it in the show notes below. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Girl Stop Playing. Like, comment, subscribe, share. And if you happen to be listening on one of our audio platforms, leave your girl a five-star review. See you on the next episode. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. This channel is all about encouraging you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. And comment below and let me know what you want to see on the next video. Peace out.